morning, everyone. We're back in the building. Praise God. It's really great to, uh, to be back at Sedgley Community Church. And we are here to worship our King, King Jesus. And we're going to bless his name. The word encourages us to come into his presence with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. And so that's what we're going to do for a short time this morning. We're going to worship our Lord and our King, our King Jesus. We're going to start with that wonderful song, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And that echoes our spirits and our soul before God this morning. We bless the Lord with all of our soul, all of our heart, everything that's within us. We bless God. So let's, the song, join us in the song. The words are on the screen. And let's just worship Jesus. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Sing like never before 
Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. All that is within me. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. God is so good. And we just want to thank him. Thank you, Lord. Thank him for all his goodness. Thank you, Lord. For all that he's done for us. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your lovely name. We exalt you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. There in your room, your front room, your bedroom, wherever you may be. Just exalt the name of Jesus. Just just lift his name high. The creator of the universe who gave himself for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
what can I do but offer this heart, oh God, completely to you. Bless the Lord. Thank you guys for leading us in worship this morning. Well, it's odd to be in the building and I've got some people to preach to. That's different to preaching to my cupboards at home in the kitchen. And I'm so glad to be back here. And many of you are going to be joining us next Sunday morning. I just feel the presence of God. I know that he's been transferred into your home right now because the anointing of the Holy Spirit is not locked in by time or distance or space. But God is truly with us. And uh, everybody's mumbling amen behind their masks. When you come back next week, you can't shout, but you can give me a wave. So, you know, just enjoy being in God's presence this morning. So great to have you back and to be back in the building. Uh, Just a few notices uh, before we pray. Uh, Next week, online continues as normal. Everything will remain online. So not not to worry if you decided to shield yourself and not to come to church in person. That's fine. And we do understand that. There's no right or wrong in all of this. We want you safe. We want you at peace and we want you blessed. So whatever your decision on that is, don't worry. We will be online with our Bible study, with my conversational Bible study with Maggie Gill, which has just been amazing over the last few weeks. And um, so if you're coming next week, we'll issue some guidelines, but it's dead simple. Just do what the government asks. Anti-back, check in, keep your distance, wear your mask and use the one-way system in church. And I know God is going to truly bless us. Amen. Good to be back. Good to be back. I just got words of thanks. I'd just like to thank uh, Chris Betts for his hard work just the last couple of weeks in setting all this up. Hopefully I look better in technicolor than I do against my black and grey wallpaper at home. Um, But God's good and uh, been a lot of hard work putting together the church ready. And for all those who also helped with cleaning and getting this place straight, thank you also. And I just wanted to say a really big thank you to my Josh who for the last 31 weeks has been my wingman, my cameraman, and we've just got on with it. You know what? We, can, we continue to preach the word, and we've loved doing every second of it. So it's great to be back, but we've enjoyed ourselves as well. Bless the Lord. We've got some stuff to pray for this morning, and I, I just really want you to really join your prayers with mine as we think about Angela today. God really needs to intervene in that situation. And as she's taking her chemotherapy, let's pray God will protect her. And bless her. For Liz as well, we want a mighty miracle to happen for Liz and for the family. So we're going to pray over Liz as well. Many of you will know that Gordon went to be home with the Lord this week. And um, obviously Sylvia is very upset. Me and Clara spent some time with her this week trying to help her and comfort her. But if you just pray for her. um, I think it was Leah. Leah said to me in the week that um, he was the best dressed man in Sedgley. So uh, we lost his shirt ties and Mr. Marks and Spencer's, but we know he's with Jesus, don't we? And what a great preacher of the gospel he was. So we're going to pray for him. For Paul as well, uh, Sue Easton and Dean Easton's son-in-law. Just We talked to him about last week having cancer of the leg. The great news is they may be able to do some surgery in order that he doesn't have to lose a limb, which is brilliant. So we're just going to keep on praying into that situation. And of course, uh, Terry, who's um, Gloria's son-in-law, Uh, desperately ill with COVID. Uh, They've done all they can for him in terms of drugs. But we believe in the power of prayer, don't we, this morning, and the Holy Spirit. So we're just going to pray and um, ask God to intervene in the name of Jesus. We bless you and we thank you this morning, Lord, that we're back in church. And Lord, we claim this ground afresh for you. We are believing in this building there are many going to get born again of the Spirit of God, that the sick are going to be touched that those that, Lord Jesus, come in broken and hurt and disappointed are going to be made into mighty men and women of God. What you were doing before we closed down, Lord Jesus, you are going to continue to do again. And I just feel that anointing of your presence in this place. And we're trusting you for some great days that lie ahead. Online, in the building, wherever we might be, Lord Jesus, we know that you are with us. And so, with that anointing upon us and that prayer of faith in our mouths and in our hearts this morning, we pray for Angela in the name of Jesus that you'd minister to her by your grace and by your power. 
for Liz. God, would you, just, would you just come upon her right now? I pray that she will, when Steve goes home, she said, I just sense the presence of God. While you were out, I just knew Jesus was with me. And would you touch her in every way? For Auntie Syl, would you put your arms around her? Lord Jesus there, down in Gornal. Lord, as she had 60 years with God, great marriage. What a wonderful man of God. We honour and salute him today in the name of Jesus. But we know he's in a better place by far. For Paul, Lord, continue to help the doctors to minister and treat him. And for Terry, he's asked us to pray, Lord. He doesn't know you. But Father, I just pray before many days have gone past that he will know you as Lord and Saviour. That the power of the Holy Spirit will enter that hospital room right now. And we talk to these lungs to say, breathe in the name of Jesus. We curse the COVID virus in his body in the name of Jesus. And we pray for your anointing and your power to fall upon him. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Well, remiss of me or not, I didn't bring any communion, but I know some of you out there, in fact, I know probably everybody sitting there with their communion. So I'm just going to lead you in a prayer while you take your communion this morning. We're going to work out a way how to do that in the building next week or the, perhaps the week after. It's a little bit more difficult logistically to do it in here. But wherever you are, let's just take a moment. Those that are here in the building, there's about half a dozen of us, and that you at home watching, Let's just concentrate our thoughts just at the moment on Calvary and upon Jesus. What a privilege is ours every time that we meet to be able to remember the goodness of God in the fact that he died for us. So if you're there right now with your communion, why don't you take the bread and remember that his body has been broken for you and his blood has been shed. So take it, this is my body which is broken for you. Let's take a moment. And again, just because we're in the building doesn't mean to say you can't comment on social media. Please put your comments up. In fact, comment a whole lot more. We're here in God's presence together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then we think about the blood of Jesus, the most powerful, potent force on the face of the earth that's ever been on the face of the earth. The only blood that could cleanse mankind from its sin. And we take it and we drink now in the name of Jesus, remembering all that he's done for us on Calvary. In Jesus' powerful and mighty name. Amen. Take a moment in the stillness, would you, just to give God thanks as we prepare our hearts for his word. Bless the Lord. Amen. Well, we come around God's word this morning and we're on our seventh part of faith school. We've been saying as a church that we want to be full of faith, haven't we? Built up in faith, uh, especially in these times when there is a lot of uncertainty in our world. I don't know about you, I know that my faith is in Jesus Christ and him alone. Uh, there's so many experts trying to tell us this thing and that thing, but I'm glad this morning that we have God's word. We have his spirit, we have his presence with us. And my prayer for us as a church is that God would help us to grasp more and more faith in him and trust him. We're not believing in each other. Some trust in horses and chariots, but we will trust in the name of our God. Psalm 20. I hope you're getting these verses and getting them deep in your hearts as we're teaching this together. So the text that we've used right from the beginning is Hebrews 11. We're going right the way through. In a couple of weeks' time, I'm going to talk about Enoch and then Abel, and we're going to go right through that list of those men and women who were commended for their faith. You know, when you commend somebody for something, you say, well done. And in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, God is saying to his people who are trusting him and have got faith towards him, well done. You haven't lived like the world. You've lived like I wanted you to be. You have trusted me. And we know we've said it's without, possible, without faith, it's impossible to please God. But he rewards us when we do. Bless the Lord. So Hebrews 11 and verse 1 and 2, they probably pop up on your screen. The technology is rolling, so we're all good. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for, the assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. So over our time together, we've been forming this biblical definition of what faith truly is. Faith is that single-minded, unwavering trust and assurance in God and his word. You can change that word for faith perhaps for confidence. 
We are confident, aren't we, this morning in God and his word. We trust every word that the Bible has to say to us. And we thank God for his Holy Spirit because we're not left with this textbook of words that we do not understand. When we know Jesus as our Lord and Saviour, he takes his Holy Spirit and he illuminates his word to us. And so we can trust his word and we can understand his word. We're those this morning are our people of faith. If you've got your Bibles, turn with me to 1 John 5 and verse 14. This is the confidence that we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we will have what we ask him for. Now we said last week, didn't we, some people in some churches moan and groan and say, how can you ever know the will of God? Well, you can know the will of God because you know what? The will of God is the word of God. What God has spoken, he looks over to perform. So we we can say this verse again. If we can have this confidence in approaching God, that we ask anything according to his word, he hears us. So if you're looking for answers today, don't try and find your own definition of your answers to your problems. Go to the word of God and allow that word to dwell in you and to change your thinking and be a platform for your praying. We can have confidence, not in what we think, but what God has already said. And then in Mark eleven twenty-four, 24, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Faith is that confident expectation that God will do what he has said he will do. And last week we talked a little bit about having to hang on, didn't we? A little bit of having sometimes have some patience. The scripture says through faith and patience we inherit stuff. And there are times we really have to hang on to God. It doesn't seem like it's going to happen. It doesn't like, seem like it's going to come to pass. But blessing in the name of the Lord, he always looks over his word. And what he has promised, he always brings to pass. Can you imagine Abraham? The Bible says he's good as dead. Man in gonal parlance, he's clapped out. He's 100 and his wife Sarah, she's, she's never been about any children and she's been drawing her pension for 30 plus years and she's clapped out as well. And God promises him children like the stars of the sky and the sand on the seashore. That seems so unlikely, doesn't it? But thanks be to God. When God speaks a word, you know what he does? He looks over his word to perform it. Bless the Lord. You know, we are trusting a loving father. Romans 8 and verse 14 says, Those who are led by the Spirit of God, we are the children of God we need to be led by his spirit this morning not led by our feelings or our emotions but to let the Holy Spirit take the word of God and to direct our paths I love that word from Proverbs if we acknowledge him in all our ways he will direct our paths he will make our way straight we can have confidence this morning Hebrews 10 and verse 35 do not throw away your confidence because it will be richly rewarded And then going back to our proof text for all of this in Hebrews 11, we pick it up in verse 6, and this is the Derby version of the Bible. If you go to Bible Gateway, you will find hundreds and hundreds of different versions of the Bible. It always pays to check up a few, because all of them have a different kind of slant, all gone back to the original wording from the Greek or the Hebrew. But, you know, sometimes you get a little bit of revelation from somebody's opinion on it, or somebody's interpretation of it. And the Derby version says this, Without faith it is impossible to please him, God, for he that draws near to God must believe that he is and that he is the reward of those who seek him out. This morning we are to seek God out. Our faith is not to be passive because he's the reward of those who seek him out. God wants that ongoing relationship with us. He wants us to push in. There are times when we pray and there's times when we declare But all of the time when we are working with God, there needs to be that proactivity. God's a proactive God, isn't he? The Bible says when the Spirit of God blows where it wants to, God is on the move all of the time. And we've said so many times from this pulpit, he's still doing more behind our back than he's doing in front of our face. God is on the move. He's doing things that we can't even imagine right now. God is never sitting still. The Bible says he never slumbers or sleeps, which is a good reason for why some of you shouldn't worry at night because God is up doing all the work you don't need to do any of the worrying amen Amen. he's working and doing what we cannot do but there is a proactivity that we need to show hebrews 10 verse 38 and 39 
but my righteous ones will live by their emotions? No. Will they live by what the world is saying to us right now? There are some great people in this world. There are some people I, I don't think ever thought would be on our television screens. I mean, Chris Whitty, I mean, where's he come from? There's people that popped up all over these places, all these scientists. Are we listening to their word? Well, we're listening to what they have to say, but we are those that live by faith. The righteous will live by our faith. We're trusting God today. The scripture says this, I have no pleasure in those who shrink back, but, they do, but we do not, he says, belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but we are those who have faith and we are saved. Faith pushes forward and does not step back. So I'm encouraging us as a church today to believe God for our future. We may be in this position of hybrid church for a while. It could be another 12 months till we all pack in like sardines like we did before. But who knows? But in all of this time, has God stopped building his church? No. Has God stopped moving by his Holy Spirit? No. We need to have more faith in God than we do about the circumstances that are surrounding us. It's an absolute travesty really to think that somehow we've had it difficult when you read the history of church throughout the ages and see the persecution that the people of God have gone through, to try and say that somehow now we're in a bit of a poor state is just a shambles, really. We've got everything. We've got our health. We've got our strength. We've got our homes. We've got this wonderful building. We've got video cameras so we can broadcast across the internet. What more do we want? We are those that have the Spirit of God living on the inside of us. It's time for us to be more proactive with our faith. God is moving on. For those who have joined me in the Bible studies, and if you haven't, there's a whole wealth of stuff there from Nehemiah, and currently we're looking at the book of Exodus, so please go back and revisit it. It's all there on YouTube and Facebook for you. If you're watching us for the first time, you can go to Sedgley CC uh, on Facebook or Sedgley Community Church on YouTube and find the stuff, not just for the last time since we've been locked down, but there are probably five or six years of ministry there, most of it audio, but now all of it, now all of it video. But as we've been looking at the book of Exodus, we've found out that the people of God do a whole lot of moaning and groaning, and instead of trusting God, trust in the circumstances that they see round and about them. And in Exodus 14 and verse 15, the scripture says this, The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Because Moses is now fed up. The people have made him fed up, and now he's crying out to God. He says, I don't want you to be crying out to me, Moses. I want you to tell the Israelites to move on. In other words... Tell my people to get off their backsides, show some faith and move into all that I've got for them. Stop keep telling them to moan and groan and cry. You know, sometimes we pray and actually our prayers are just hitting the ceiling because God is actually asking us to go. There is no point in praying about something God has already declared and said we should need to do. So if God's told you to go and do something, don't pray about it for the next 15 months. Go do it now. Be pre proactive with your faith. Because opportunities have a sell-by date. I believe God has great, given us this great opportunity in this time of this pandemic to re-evaluate church and to see God come in anew in a fresh way. Is this going to stop people being born again? Absolutely not. Is this going to stop people being healed? No. Is it going to stop the gospel being preached? Definitely not. And you know what Bill Gates says? There are two groups of people in the world that seem to have taken over the internet the pornographers and the Christians. And we are here to stay, my friends. And we want the gospel to be all over this place. There is more Christian media on the internet than anything in the whole of the world's history of the internet before. The church is on the rise. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. But we need our faith towards him, don't we? So he told Moses, tell him, stop crying out to me and just get on with it. Church, I'm telling you this morning, it's time to get on. It's time to move on. Luke 11 so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For anyone who asks receives, whoever seeks finds. The one who knocks the door will be opened to him. This set of verses follows a wonderful parable that Jesus tells. A strange story. It tells a story about a man who friend comes from a distance and he has no bread to give him. So the guy... Uh, He's got in bed. All the children are tucked up in their bunk beds. They've all had their milk and cookies. It's the middle of the night. And his friend goes on and keeps knocking the door and knocking the door until this man gets up and gives him some bread so he'll just go away. And this is what the scriptures tell you. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him bread because of his friendship, 
yet because of his shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give him as much as he needed. Jesus is teaching us shameless audacity towards him. God wants us to extend our faith and to trust him and to believe him for more than we've ever believed him before. We're supposed to be people of faith, aren't we? We're supposed to be people that take God at his word. Yet so very often we believe for so little. I've said it before and I will say it again. There's a lovely building sitting next door to our church here that is going to be vacated. We are believing in faith that God is going to give that into our hands, aren't we? We need to stretch our faith this morning. Because when there is a vision, I said this earlier, I think I probably said it on Maggie. We'll, you'll hear this tomorrow with, when I talk to Maggie. When God gives a vision, he always provides provision. So we need to start to be provision-minded now and believe in God and extending our faith to believe and trust that he can meet all of our needs. Not some of them, all of our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God is teaching his people not to be proactive, uh, pro, uh, to be proactive and not reactive, just to get up and to knock and to ask and to seek. They're all doing words, aren't they? I'm not an English scholar. I wasn't very good at school, but I know they are doing words. Ask, seek, knock. Hebrews 11 talks us about the people that God commends for their faith, and they're all doing something. The scripture says that Abel gave. Abel gave a wonderful sacrifice to God. So he was doing something with his faith. He was commended for giving. Enoch walked with God. And he was not because God took him. Noah, we've looked at this the other, the other week, didn't we? Noah built a boat in the middle of a desert place, in the middle of where there was the never even seen rain. And he builds something the size of a small uh, football stadium. And he brings in the animals. God allows him to do all of that stuff together. And he does it by faith. But he has to start by getting his toolbox out and getting ready for what God has asked him to do. So Noah builds bless the lord so all of these things are happening sarah receives moses leaves and joshua marches out in triumph these are all active and doing words i believe this morning god has stirred me to tell you i got out of bed this morning to preach this message that said community church it's time as the people of god here for us to have some audacious faith and that starts with us doing something getting off our chair getting on our knees giving of our money, spending of our time. It is time for the church to be back, maybe in a different format. Maybe it's not ever going to look like it did before. But we're not going to worry about that because we are following God. And he's got so much ahead of us. So we need just to buy into all that God is doing. The scripture tells us that we can boldly approach God, the throne of God in grace, in a time of need. We can audaciously come before him and ask things of him. You know why? Because he loves us. He's our father. God doesn't ask us to do things for him this morning. He's asking us to do things with him. He says, I no longer call you servants, but I do call you my friends. Because servants don't know what the pastor's about, but you as my people, you're going to know what I'm about because I'm going to teach you and I'm going to guide you into all truth through my word. We need to be those who have audacious faith and trust God. 2 Timothy 1 and verse 6, For this reason... I remind you to fan into flame, into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of hands. For the Spirit of God gave us, does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and a self-discipline. For the Spirit of God does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Well, you know, God's not given us that spirit of timidity, another version says. We're not to be timid this morning. We're to be bold. We're to be audacious with our faith. James talks about that, doesn't he? He said, faith without corresponding action is dead. Faith without works is dead. We have to be audacious, but we have to be proactive. We have to be bold, but we have to take steps of faith. Don't tell me that you're believing God for something and that's not changing the, the way that you're living or acting or speaking. I am now saying words that I didn't say a couple of months ago, which is, God, give us that little building next door to church in the name of Jesus. My faith is now... Changing the words that I'm putting in my mouth. I'm now declaring things that are not as if they were. Now, I just want to, I, I, this is not in my notes, but I did want to quash something this morning because I think some people get the wrong end of the stick that, you know, that somehow that God made everything from nothing. No, God made everything from what is not seen. He didn't say there was nothing there. Did, did you get that this morning? God, God makes everything from what is not seen, but it doesn't mean there's nothing there. There is a realm 
of God, the spirit realm, the heavenly realm, that is far greater of a reality than the world that we are now living in. And God, by his Holy Spirit, is telling us to pray, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. You know, God has got all the resources that we will ever need to live a godly life and to see people saved and touched and delivered. There is a realm of the Holy Spirit that some of us have not really appreciated. You know, the, the thing about the Lord doing more behind our back is actually there is a spirit realm. So when the little lad comes with his loaves and fishes, God does not, Jesus does not break them and create them out of nothing. There's resources in heaven. You know, you know, you know there's food in heaven. Don't call me a heretic now. There is food in heaven. And you know what? You know how I know that? Because the Bible says one day we're, there's, going to be a, there's going to be a wedding and there's going to be a feast. The marriage supper of the Lamb. And from every kingdom, tongue, time and nation, there's going to be food there. Uh, there's real stuff in heaven. It's not ethereal. We are not going to be floating around on some cloud someday playing a harp. There are real streets that shine with the glory of the Lamb. There's a wedding, there's a feast. We, there's a song that's like, because of you, because of your love. There is a wedding, there is a feast, there is a place that God has prepared for us. And it's of a greater reality. So by faith now, we pull into our realm the things that are not and declare them in the name of Jesus. The resources of heaven, says the community church, are at our disposal. And we call them in by faith this morning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 We need to be proactive because our faith is not a theological position. It's been stirred in obedience to God's word. I don't care what you say you believe. James says, don't, sh- don't just tell me that you believe. Do something about it. And that's my word to you this morning. God bless you. We want to be proactive in our faith. So this is what church is going to look like going forward. We're going to have some worship. We're going to have some communion, pray together and have the word of God just like we've always done it. So it's great to be back in the building. I am so delighted that God has given us this opportunity. But my faith is rising. Let me just say this. This building is not big enough. And we have not yet seen what God has prepared for those that love him. God is going to come in a powerful way, I believe, as we encounter him in these next few weeks. I'm excited. Many of people are worried. What's going to happen about Christmas? Never mind Christmas. We are going to raid that internet. We're going to put Bible verses on there every day. And we are believing people to get saved. We're doing Alpha. Um, Alpha's, uh, online Alpha is going to be launched in January. That's all 12 churches in Sedgley and Gornal working together as one church to see people born again of the Spirit of God. So there's lots to look forward to. And uh, if you're coming next week, get prayed up, come. You say, what's it going to be like wearing my mask? Well, it's not nice, but I'll tell you what, God's here and you'll truly be blessed. And those that are here this morning are nodding and smiling and waving at me. So bless the Lord. I'm going to pray a blessing upon you as we go. And just thank you again for your time. Thank you for all your support over these last weeks when we've not been in the building. It's been so odd. Aren't I glad to claim my pulpit back in the name of Jesus? I'm just feeling the anointing of the power of God all over me right now. These are great days that lie ahead of us. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Hallelujah. We're back in church. We never did shut church, Lord. Your gates, the gates of hell were not prevailing against us, even though the enemy was grimacing through his teeth. We know that, Lord Jesus, you have been building your church and that people have been saved while we've been shut down. People have been touched while we've been shut down. People have given themselves back to you while we've been shut down. But now, Lord Jesus, we take a fresh stand, carefully distancing, but, Lord, not not knowing, not distancing from you because our hearts are connected right into the heart of the Father this morning. So, Father, I just pray wherever our people are, whether people are listening from abroad or here, home in the UK, for our online family and for the family of the church, we pray that we'll bless us all in the name of Jesus. So, good morning and God bless you. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit be with us now and for always. In Jesus' name. Amen.